Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another Game 3 Struggle. This video is called Think Before You Play. What I'm going to talk about in this video is we're going to go through an example game theory problem. And along the way, I'm going to give you some tips on how you might be able to approach and solve these problems more easily. The whole goal of Think Before You Play is really to focus on what can you do before you start doing the math to sort of think about the problem and think through how the game works to make both the solution easier to sort of see ahead of time, but also how the game might be solved more easily. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's get right into it. So here is just an example. You're presented with this problem and you are trying to solve this problem. So first let's sort of walk through the problem and think about how we can translate this into a picture in our heads. So first, right off the bat, you can see that we've named this game Farming Ant Wells. Most professors will name their games in order to give you just a sense of what's happening. So I'm already sort of picturing maybe a farmer, a field, and a well. And we'll go ahead and keep reading. It says that farmers use wells to draw water from the ground to use to grow crops. Okay, well that automatically tells me it's probably the case that zero water means zero crops, so I need water to grow crops. I have two farmers, A and B. I'm going to call them Bill and Deborah just for fun. They each have wells that tap the same source of water underground. We'll call that an aquifer. And we're going to say that that aquifer has four units of water. And since I'm thinking about pulling water out of a well, I'm going to say four buckets worth. And they're each deciding how many buckets of water to pull out of this well. So big WT represents the amount of water in the aquifer at time T. Now we've sort of had this set up in our mind and we can think about how the game is starting to work, which is why I've switched colors to highlighting this stuff in green. So each period, Farmer A and Farmer B, Bill and Deborah, must choose how much to take out of this aquifer. They can choose zero, one, or two buckets or units of water. Notice that because we've already talked in this setup that zero water means zero crops, this zero choice isn't really a choice. It's sort of maybe just a function of whether or not there's water in the well, because otherwise you would not choose to draw zero unit because then you would grow zero crops. They receive a payoff equal to the amount of water they extract. Okay, so the utility function for Bill and Deborah is just WT, where really their choice is between one or two because zero is not really a choice. Okay, we'll keep reading. So however, if the total water extracted exceeds the total water available, that means, for example, you try to pull out four buckets worth of water, but there's only two buckets worth of water in the aquifer, then that aquifer is permanently depleted. You've absolutely destroyed it and it's not coming back. So then all subsequent rounds, Bill and Deborah can only extract zero. Basically, again, not a choice, there's just zero water. So if the amount of water is exactly equal to zero, then you can't choose anything at all except for zero still. But notice that the aquifer is not permanently depleted, it's just dried up. So if I saw that in the question, I would probably think, okay, might be the case that later on it's going to like rain or something and the aquifer can maybe be restored. But for now, that's not the case. So I'll just sort of table that sentence to later. We're also going to say that farmers, Bill and Deborah, discount the future at the same discount rate, some delta between zero or one, which is pretty standard. It's just their level of patience. So if you have not yet seen how to draw like an economist, here is another great drawing for you where you've got Bill and Deborah. You've got an aquifer in the center. They each have little buckets they can use to dip and take water out. They're choosing how many buckets out of the aquifer they want to take and throw on their little farms in brown. And so now you can already see if you think about something like the tragedy of the commons, it's probably going to be the case that this aquifer is going to get depleted. And again, we haven't even started answering any of the questions yet, but you've already had an idea of how the game works what the solution is probably going to be. And so when we start solving this, you can sort of tell, well, this is the answer I should get. And if I don't get it, I'm probably made a mistake and I should go back and check. But all of this is easier because you've sat there and have thought about the game before you started answering the questions. So let's just go on to part A, which is to find all the SPNE of this game and whether or not this aquifer becomes permanently depleted and when. And again, unsurprisingly, we think this aquifer is going to get depleted. So notice, Again, once again, zero water means zero crops. So this is really a choice of one versus two waters, which means that really the choice is, do we deplete this aquifer in one round or two rounds? Because to be a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium must be the case that we're best responding to each other. And it's not definitely not the case that if Bill sees Deborah pull out two units of water, Bill's not gonna wanna pull out one because then there will only be one unit of water total left over next period and they're not allowed to split a unit or a bucket full of water. So if Deborah is pulling out two units of water, then Bill should also pull out two units or buckets of water. And if Bill is pulling out one bucket, Deborah probably wants to pull out two buckets, which means that Bill actually also wants to pull out two buckets. 
So really, this is a choice between do we want to deplete this aquifer in one round where we each pull out two buckets, or do we want it to stretch out for two rounds where we pull out one bucket in each period? Now, if Deborah, for example, says, well, maybe I want to pull out one unit of water today and one unit of water tomorrow, then that's going to give me a payoff of one plus delta, which is less than if I just pull out two buckets of water to begin with. So both people have a dominant strategy just to pull out two buckets of water today. So that's exactly what's going to happen. The aquifer is going to get depleted. That's going to happen in one period. And in this example, there's no subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, which the aquifer does not get depleted because there's no world in which pulling one unit of water today and one unit of water tomorrow is better just for the person on their own, whether or not you've taken the other person's action into account. There's no world in which one and one is greater than two and zero because of this discount factor being less than one. So if both people prefer to take two units out today and zero tomorrow, that's a dominant strategy for both of them. So that is what happens. And you can see, again, just by thinking about the game ahead of time, we sort of knew that was going to happen and we just needed to mathematically show that. Now let's move on to part B. So in part B, notice that we're going to have rainfall. And so water is replenished at the end of the period after choices have been made and all the water is extracted. So what I like to do for this is I like to sort of write out a more concise version or notes to myself on the side. So here is how the game works now. It's day T. We wake up. We decide how many buckets of water I want to pull out of this well. Then it's going to rain two units in the afternoon. And basically, if there is at least some water in this aquifer, then we're going to have two more buckets that fall into this aquifer and the aquifer gets refilled. But if the aquifer is empty, then that water just goes straight into the ground. It doesn't add to the aquifer, it just gets soaked up. And so we don't have any more water and the aquifer continues to be at zero buckets of water. So now our two options are we can either sustain the aquifer or deplete the aquifer. What do I mean by sustain and deplete? Well, if I sustain, basically what I can do is I can choose two units of water today and then just one unit for the rest of my life because if I choose one for the rest of my life, basically what's going to happen is the aquifer is going to be at two after I take out water and after Deborah also takes out water, it's going to rain two units. Option two is deplete where basically we choose two units of water each in both periods and the aquifer becomes permanently depleted after two turns and then we get zero for the rest of the time. So if we sustain, I'm going to get 2 plus this infinite sum of delta t times 1. And if I deplete, I'm going to get 2 plus 2 times delta, which if we want to sustain the aquifer, and we're trying to find an SPNE in which the aquifer is never permanently depleted, for that to happen, the payoff of sustaining the aquifer must be greater than or equal to the payoff of depleting the aquifer. So you can already see we're going to have some sort of condition with respect to delta. And if I just set up that math and go through this, you can see what's going to happen is we are going to get this infinite sum. We're going to use our trick for a geometric series and the sum of that geometric series, which is delta over one minus delta. We're going to get that delta must be greater than or equal to one half. And all that means is, as you might suspect, Bill and Deborah have to be sufficiently patient in order for a sustain to work. If I don't care enough about the future, I'm going to deplete the aquifer in two turns. But if I do care about my crops in future periods, even like period three, then I'm going to want to sustain the aquifer and this is the level of patience I need in order to make this happen. So hopefully what this does is it gives you a little better idea and an example of how to think through a game theory problem before you solve it, but it also gives you another example of a solved game theory question in some game perfect Nash equilibrium. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.